as with any series involving with the Miami Heat this year, you can't just look at the, the talent on paper and say, well, this team has more, this team has less, you know, let's pick against the Heat. Mm. Clearly, this is a situation where the Celtics have much more talent than the Heat do. Um, however, the Heat have been excellent in the playoffs so far. Obviously excellent in round one. Jimmy Butler rolls his ankle. Hasn't really gone back. To, he hasn't really gone back to that level, but that wasn't even necessary to beat Jalen Brunson running 80 pick and rolls a game with the, <laughs> with, uh, with the New York Knicks. So, yeah, just real quickly, I just want one thing from each of you guys uh, on this series. Um, what are you looking for, Cash, in terms of as a decider, uh, deciding factor between these two teams? All right, I'll let Wolf on handle the tactics, and I'll just say, is Jimmy Butler the best player in this series? Because I think if he, he is, if he outplays Jason Tatum, I think does the Heat have a chance for sure. Like, Wolf on always refers to their devil magic. I always refer to Heat culture. Eric Spolstra, you know he's going to, even if you put a good coach on the other side of him, he might still coach circles around them. Like, sure. they're, they're going to have a chance in the series because of all that. If Jimmy Butler's the best player in the series, they've they've got a great shot to get to the finals again. Yeah, I'm going to be looking at, like, how is Miami scoring points, basically? Uh, <laughs> that's that's always the question with Miami. It always is. And they've found ways, like, their, their offense really fell off in the Knicks series. They really won that series with defense, but they still, they found ways. I, I said this to Cash, like, they had the highest rim frequency of any second round team, mm. which is crazy for them because they were 28th in rim volume yeah. during the regular season. Also, the Knicks have bigs. Like, you shouldn't even be able to yeah. score at the rim that often or even get to the rim that often. Yeah, and I will say, like, over the past couple of years, um, or maybe it was just last year, this year I think they were actually one of the lowest in terms of, like, opponent rim frequency. Mm. Um, but they have had schemes in the past where they will kind of invite teams to drive in and, like, funnel them toward their bigs at the rim. Uh, I don't think that was really what was happening in that series. It was basically happening because they were showing a lot of bodies to Jimmy. They're like, we're not going to let what happened to the Bucks happen to us. Uh. We'll make other people beat us. And the Heat kind of obliged, right? Like, they found enough ways to to beat the Knicks rotations after they were throwing two on the ball. The Celtics don't really have to throw two on the ball. And, I mean, I guess maybe you could say that about Milwaukee, too. There's like, oh, we got Drew, Drew Holiday. Like, we can handle Jimmy in single coverage. No mm -hmm. big deal. And... You know, we saw how that worked out for them. But just in terms of, like, their pick-and-roll coverages, I think they're mostly going to either switch or they're going to drop. And they'll say, like, prove to us that you can beat us with pull-up jumpers the way that you did the Bucks. And if the Heat show that they can, if they go on another one of those shooting heaters, the Celtics just have counters, right? Like, they, sure. they, they can switch. They If they really want to they can blitz and they can do a good job of kind of like recovering and handling the rotations on the backside because they are so big mm. and long um so i'm just curious to see like can miami find offensive pressure points like enough ways to score on boston's defense to win this series because i think you know their defense has proven in past matchups between these two teams that they have a pretty good beat on how to slow down the celtics offense oh yeah um, um. Go ahead. But it's, yeah, but it's just going to come down to whether they can score enough to make that matter. Yeah. I feel like the Heat have had the less talented roster for the third straight time. But this is the third time they're fa facing the conference finals in the last four years. Yep. Um, the Heat won it in the bubble. Um, the Celtics won it in seven last year, narrowly avoiding that collapse in the fourth quarter where Jimmy Butler famously pulled up, uh, I believe, on Al Horford and missed it for three. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think they consistently find ways to sort of gum up what the Celtics want to do. I, I, this, is what, this is one of those series I really wonder about the possession battle. Like, can Miami, like, step in for charges, which that seems to be their whole team-wide philosophy. Everybody, if you, the Heat culture is just stepping in for a charge. Honestly, it really is. Everybody on that team will step in for a charge. Um, how many turnovers can they force? Um, and, and sort of how much can they sort of disrupt the Celtics? Mm -hmm. But to me, the, the, the other question defensively is just like, okay, so Jimmy will guard Tatum or Jimmy will guard Jalen Brown. Who's guarding the other big wing on the Celtics for Miami? I, I would say Martin, Caleb Martin. Yeah, yeah. Caleb and, Martin. And that's that's another one of the big questions I have. Yeah. Is like, I don't know. Is is Kevin Love starting, or are they you know downsizing with that with that starting lineup and bringing Martin into the mix? That would be a chess match, though, right? Because you're essentially doing the same thing against Robert Williams that the Sixers were doing, right? And yeah, so like that, when I was talking about you know what what am I mo most interested in tactically? when we had this conversation on our pod, it was like, okay, so the Celtics kind of tilted the balance of that series against the Sixers by going back to that two-big front court. That really helped them pull away in that series, I think. Against Miami, I, you know, that either, to me, makes 
Kevin Love more playable than he might otherwise be in that series. Like if mm. the Celtics go back to their Horford at five starting lineup with like Jalen Brown at four, I don't think the Heat can get away with starting Kevin Love. Yeah. Because yeah. who's fair. he going to guard? 